Today, we're comparing some of the top cycling computers on the market. We'll look at their latest, greatest features like multi-band GPS, mapping, as well as some of the new predictive climbing screens. And we could call this video the battle of the $400 bike computer, or we could just call it the Edge 840 versus the Wahoo Roam version 2 versus the Hammerhead Karoo 2. allowed to say this but uh, I actually think that each and every one of these cycling computers they're pretty decent they're pretty well equipped to handle pretty much anything that you would throw at them um, I don't know if that makes for a great start of a video but what I figured was we'd start with what they have in common just briefly before diving a bit deeper into all of their differences and they're all sort of similar in price the Wahoo Roam version 2 is $400, and the suggested retail for the Hammerhead Karoo 2 is also $400. But I do expect the prices to drop on this one at some point, just because this device is getting a little bit older. I haven't heard any rumors of an update to this device, but it seems likely that Hammerhead would eventually want to update this device to something like a Hammerhead Karoo 3. Uh, and then the Garmin Edge 840, fairly new. Don't expect a ton of discounts on this at this point, but it's the most expensive at $400. $450 or $550 if you choose the solar edition. Now they're all able to navigate you through any sort of route that you upload from a variety of different locations. So any sort of exports from Strava or Ride with GPS, Map My Ride, a Komoot, any place like that. Basically, if you can export a GPX file, these devices will build a functional route for you. Uh, and then all of these now use USB-C for charging, which is nice. And then what's new here on these devices is that each of these computers have a predictive hill climbing data screen, meaning that you don't have to program in a route for these computers to take a guess at which hill you might be going towards, and it'll pull up those specific details about that hill. So that's stuff like gradient details or how much longer you have on that particular climb. And Garmin calls it their Climb Pro feature, Wahoo calls it their Summit Free Ride, and then the Hammerhead Crew 2 calls it their Climber feature. It's one of my favorite new features on really any of these devices. Uh, I don't tend to program a lot of routes in, I just tend to go out and ride, and I do like climbing hills. But I'm excited that each one of these companies has implemented their own hill climbing feature. But when we start to look at differences between these three devices, I think the first thing that you'll notice is that the Roam actually looks a little bit different. There's just a little bit more going on with this device. It has three buttons across the top of it, and it has two rows of indicator lights, one row across the top and one along the side. And those indicator lights, they are, they're customizable, so you can have it reflect how fast you're going or how many watts you're pushing. Uh, but at the same time, this row along the side will actually show you traffic approaching if you're using a cycling radar. And a side note, if you're not using a cycling radar, you know, I highly recommend it. Definitely go snag one for yourself. Uh, cycling radars, I think of them as like a must have, uh, but these indicator lights, they're more of a, a nice to have, I guess, uh, but it is nice that they've integrated that with the cycling radar data. And I should also quickly mention that uh, all three of these cycling computers will show you that cycling radar information. They all follow that Ant Plus light and radar protocol. Uh, and pretty much they'll indicate traffic in the same way, kind of along the side of the display. But the Roam also has three buttons along the top here, which I really like. And I think that any of these touch points on any of these devices is also important for us to discuss. So the three buttons along the top will do things like start or stop or resume a ride uh, or select an item within the menu system. And Wahoo's UI clearly labels what each button will do. And then there's a power button on the left side and an up and down button on the right. And that up and down button, it'll actually navigate through the menu system, but when you're not in the menu system, those buttons act as, it's kind of like a data zoom feature, or at least that's kind of how I describe it. Using it will increase or decrease the amount of data on your current page. So if you're decreasing the amount of data, it's also increasing the size and the prominence of that top data metric. Of course, you know, all of this data is editable. So, you know, if power is the most important metric to you, you can kind of put it at the top of the screen. And then as you zoom, 
that's the one that'll stay on the screen and it'll get larger. And then Wahoo has a companion app. It's just called their Element app or the Wahoo Element companion app, but you can use that that app to kind of change data fields or send new routes over to your computer. And then with the Hammerhead Crew 2, you would need to do all of that on the device itself. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I'd say it's almost like they have a die hard philosophy over there at Hammerhead. I think their opinion is that the device itself is basically a smartphone and you shouldn't need a smartphone to manage it. You just do everything right on the device itself. In the Crew 2, it even has a spot for a SIM card. It goes in this kind of little round covering spot on the back of the computer, uh, but that allows it to connect to a cellular network, which you know, for me, it's a bit of a pain point. I don't actually have any huge desire to pay for another data plan for this particular device, which means that, you know, I'll actually need to be home or connected to a Wi-Fi network to manage any of the routes or upload my rides to Strava. And then with the Garmin, the 840, I'd say it's kind of the best of both worlds. You can edit any data metric either on the device or on your smartphone and sync it over to the device if you prefer to do it that way. So you can also create routes, navigate to interesting locations, all on the device itself or via the smartphone app, which Garmin calls their Garmin Connect app. But I was supposed to be talking about buttons here. I kind of got a little bit sidetracked. Uh, Garmin has five buttons on the side and then two buttons on the front lip of the device, which can be a little hard to access if you are using an out front mount. Uh, but on the left side of the device is a power button and up and down buttons. And then on the right side is a selection button at the top and the bottom right button is a back button for navigating backwards through the UI. And this is the first time that Garmin has actually included all of these buttons on its 800 series devices because this device has always historically been a touchscreen, same with the 840 here. Uh, but I'm glad that Garmin has allowed for either buttons or touchscreen for navigating through the cycling computer's operating system on this. It's just, it's a better idea, it's a better system. It's the way they do it with their watches. And you know, it sometimes rains, sometimes you have gloves on. Uh, the Hammerhead Crew 2 also has a touchscreen and has four buttons which you can use to perform just the basic stuff like switching pages, starting, pausing, and stopping activities. And then the touchscreen on that Hammerhead Crew 2, it's built upon a very nice 3.2 inch screen with an extremely crisp and bright display. It's 292 pixels per square inch, so a really nice, uh, sharp display, high pixel density, uh, which I'd say is a bit higher than some of the other devices that we're talking about here. Uh, but I wanna be clear, uh, just because the device is sharper and bigger, it doesn't necessarily make it better when you're actually out on the road. I'd say it's really all about contrast and readability when we're on the bike and we're looking at these cycling computers and we're potentially in very bright direct sunlight. And I'm not gonna like crown a winner as to the best display, but you know, I'll put up some images here and let you guys be the judge. You can kind of comment below this video if you want to on the most visible or the most kind of glanceable display in direct sunlight. But the Garmin screen is the smallest at 2.6 inches. It's a 246 by 322 pixel display. And then the Wahoo Roam, it kind of sits in the middle here. It's a 2.7 inch display, 240 by 400 pixels. And I will also mention that I absolutely love the way that Wahoo uses this color display. You'll notice sometimes that it'll be uh, green, yellow, or red around a specific metric showing you that you're kind of at your limit or you're in a comfortable spot. Now, I don't generally bike for more than six hours, but each of these bike computers, they do vary quite a bit when it comes to battery life. For example, the Hammerhead Crew 2, it'll only go between, I'd say somewhere between seven and 14 hours, depending on which features you have turned on, how the display is set up, how the display brightness is set, uh, and what devices you kind of have connected to it. And I tend to connect a fair amount of devices, so that's like a cycling radar always, uh, a power meter, uh, maybe a chest strap, a chest heart rate monitor, and I actually keep the display bright. So I typically don't see amazing battery life with this device. Mapping is another spot that'll really take a toll on the battery life. And the Wahoo Roam 2 is actually a bit better. You can expect around 17 hours of battery life. Again, battery life might be more or less important for you personally, uh, but the Garmin Edge 840 does have the best battery life between the three with 26 hours or as much as 32 hours if you do opt for that solar edition. And that's again, assuming that you're seeing about 75,000 lux of sunlight conditions when you're out on some sort of reasonably sunny day 
on the bike. But the Edge 840 also has a battery saver mode. It's actually configurable, so you can kind of configure it to turn on more or less items. Uh, it's great. It'll kind of pop up if you're riding and your battery starts to get low, and it'll pretty much allow you to go significantly farther. So if you're on a ride and you're kind of in the middle of a ride and it doesn't look like the computer's gonna make it, you can switch it into that battery saver mode and you should be able to get pretty far. I would say keep in mind that that solar edition does cost an additional $100, so a total of $550. And I said this in my full Edge 840 review, I'll link it up here somewhere. Uh, I personally think the non-solar edition of this 840 is, is the way to go. Save that extra 100 bucks. That's just my two cents. Now, I should also mention that battery life on the Garmin will also depend on what GPS mode you have selected. And I guess the same would probably be true for the Wahoo uh, Roam version two. Uh, but if you are using that multi-band GPS mode, uh, it'll take a significant hit on your battery life. My suggestion is to use the auto select mode on the Garmin, which will trade off between uh, GPS modes based on the GPS signal strength. It's kind of the best of both worlds, uh, but you can also select that based on which cycling profile you have selected. So if you do have a mountain bike and you have a mountain bike profile set up on this device, you can kind of set that to be, you know, your more accurate GPS uh, and just, you know, realize that it will affect battery life. And I found the Garmin to be extremely accurate when it comes to GPS accuracy. Uh, the Wahoo Roam version two also did very well with this multiband GPS and I do see it performing better than older devices. But the Hammerhead Crew does not have that same GPS chipset, and if I'm looking closely at some of the GPS tracks, I can definitely see that it's, it's clearly the least accurate when it comes to GPS. But again, I'm just gonna remind you guys, you know, GPS accuracy, it's probably slightly more important when you're on curvy trails, and a lot less important when you're just out on the road on the road bike or whatever. I just don't think it matters all that much if it nails exactly the spot in the cycling lane where you're at, or even if the total distance is off by a few hundredths of a mile. Now, looking at the map details between these three devices, I do think that the Garmin device has the upper hand here. Uh, this is probably another spot where it might only matter if you're interested in biking on more obscure locations, you know, maybe gravel roads or mountain bike trails or something like that. Uh, uh, but I do find the Garmin maps to be a touch better. And then lastly, I'll just mention that the Garmin Edge A40 has a few additional features and metrics that the other two don't have. Uh, the device itself will collect and track your training status, how productive your training is. Uh, it'll show things like your acute load, and it'll estimate your VO2 max. It also has this cycling ability metric, which might tell you that you're a sprinter, or in my case, it says that I'm an endurance specialist, which, you know, come on Garmin. It's just, it's a, it's a nice way of them saying that I'm slow on the bike. Uh, but you know, I don't know exactly how valuable that is. If it's important to you, uh, know that it's on the Garmin. And then there's also a metric called stamina and stamina potential, which is basically a measurement of fatigue. Uh, stamina is for short-term fatigue and stamina potential is more of like a longer term fatigue metric. And then Garmin devices have some mountain biking specific metrics, grit and flow, for example. Grit is a measurement of the difficulty of a ride using GPS, elevation, and a little bit of other data. And then flow measures how smoothly you ride on that trail. And the Edge 840 can also measure mountain biking jump counts, jump distance, hang time, a whole bunch of stuff that really isn't all that important to me. I do like mountain biking, but I'm not the mountain biking jump type guy. Okay, I thought it might be fun to rank all of these computers on some random criteria. Keep in mind that this is just my quick opinion here, uh, but when it comes to the utmost features, uh, I would put them in this order. The Edge 840, the Hammerhead Crew 2, and then the Roam. And then I'd say if I'm ranking these based on mapping specifically, I would say the Edge 840, and then the Roam, and then the Hammerhead Crew 2. If we're looking at like just straight up best screen resolution, uh, the Hammerhead Crew 2 obviously, and then the Roam, and then the Edge 840. And then if we're looking at just straight up screen readability and, and direct sunlight, again, you guys are supposed to be commenting below, but I'll say the Roam, and then the Edge 840, and then the Hammerhead Crew 2. Now, if we're ranking just based on GPS accuracy, I'll say the Edge 840, and then the Roam, and then the Hammerhead Crew 2. 
Um, if we're coming up with other kind of metrics to judge things by, uh, fastest software updates, Hammerhead Crew 2, uh, Edge A40, and then the Roam. If we're comparing battery life, maybe that's a little more important, the Edge 840, the Wahoo, and then the Hammerhead Crew 2. If you are into mountain biking, I would definitely say Edge 840, and then I'll go Wahoo Roam, and then Hammerhead Crew 2. Now, a lot of people will ask me if they should stick to one particular brand. For example, they have a Garmin watch or a Wahoo watch, and you know they think, shouldn't they just stick to that same particular brand for a cycling computer? I'd say there, there, there are a couple of like minor benefits. They have some like handoff kind of features and things like that. But typically, I actually recommend that people stick to the best cycling computer that meets their needs and not to hesitate to mix and match between brands. And that's just you know a few of my thoughts when discussing these three particular cycling computers. And of course, I'd much rather hear from you guys. I'd much rather hear what you guys think. Be sure to drop below in the comment section and we can continue the conversation down below. And like I said at the top of this video, I actually think that they're all three really great options. And I really do think that you'll be happy with really any of the three of these bike computers if you pick one out. I think the most important thing is that you're getting out there, swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.